Identity is a matter of principles, personality, beliefs, and outlooks. In fact, it defines what someone is, and that is the reason why people tend to challenge boundaries in order to uphold it at all costs. The strategy of the snail is an epic that depicts the significance of identity through characters with determination who act under different archetypes that express all their different behaviors in relation to a complex sociopolitical situation that affects the people involved. To explain those archetypes represented by the characters of the movie, we decided to take into account the Jung's theory. Now, the question is, what is an archetype? Well, an archetype is a collectively inherited and conscious idea, pattern, of fact, image, etc., universally present in individual psyches. To give you some background information, Jung was a psychiatrist who studied the influence of symbols and common myths in our conscious and unconscious mind, and he stated that archetypes are often incarnated as characters in myths, novels, and films. The strategy of the snail is a clear example in which we can identify so many different archetypes, but before going into them, let's talk about the movie. The film starts with a news reporter interviewing a tenant after a breathtaking situation in which the lower class composed by some inhabitants of the river tenancy after many years of quiet living there rebel against the owner of the house for he wants them out. The Uribe house is an old building inhabited by different people from the same socioeconomic class. They all have scarce financial resources to live and they are told to leave the house because its owner, a rich man from Bogotá's exclusive area, has new plans for it. After many upheavals with the authorities, the tenants are given more time with the allegedly objective of having enough time to find a new place to live in and paint in the house too. Meanwhile, an intellectual and rebellious pioneer who lives in the tenancy too leads a strategy that consisted of removing everything inside the house walls, windows, kitchens, toilets, etc., and having all of it moved to a place located on the hills of the west of Bogota by the use of a rope, a wooden tower, and a pulley. When the deadline arrives, the tenants have removed everything inside the house and have moved it to the hills. By the time lawyers, policemen, and the owner of the house approach the building to witness that the tenants have actually left, they are surprised by a huge explosion that causes the collapse of the house's facade and a house painted on the rear wall with a writing that said, Ahí tienen su reputa casa pintada, which translates, here's your mother fucking painted house. We are going to explain why identity is the central theme of analysis in the movie and how it is developed through the whole film. Following this line of thought, identity is what moves the characters to plan a strategy that allows them keeping their collective memory and dignity safe and sound. It turns into a personal fight when it comes to defense identity, concept that is mainly materialized and represented by the house known as the Casa Uribe. This house is the nub of the issue because in it reposes the stories of people's lives, their refuge, the ways they have developed to resist the oppressive situations caused by those who have the power. The character's struggle does not respond to an individual conflict of interests. It has transcended into a complex level in which social affairs as dignity are the main proposed to be defended. They consider that particular interests cannot superimpose the collective ones, and that joining together is finding points of agreement to achieve a common benefit. For this reason, they are prepared to sacrifice their own comfort to manage the objective, such as the segment of the film in which Gabriela gives her bathtub to prove the strategy. In addition, analyzing the meaningful title of the movie, we interpret that when a snail feels threatened, it looks for refuge in its shell, and when it can't stay at the same place because of any reason, it carries its house on its back because that's all what it has, all what it is. Thus, we can establish that not only places influence personal constructions by shaping a set of traits that allow a group to be distinguished from others, but also that there is a reciprocal relationship of constant resignification in which inhabitants and the house of Rive are immersed. They provide of meaning each other by building a strong connection that works in terms of complementary. For example, Mrs. Trina affirms in the movie, they won't get me out of this house. Here I was born and here I will die. This portrays the sense of belonging that a person might develop for a place. The process of eviction shows the intention of a person to pull up each and every vestige of identity that could have been built in community by the tenants of that house. When someone doesn't recognize the another one, he or she is not only dehumanizing that person, but also he or she is snatching 
any opportunity those people have to be valued, to be taken into account by others. According to Young's theory, identity is shaped by external and internal factors. On one hand, there is a component in this theory that is called collective unconscious, which is inherent to humans regardless of the place they grew up and which helps to shape our personality and acts rely on the social imaginaries known as archetypes. On the other hand, the component that is called personal unconscious is composed by repressed recalls stored in our memory which can only emerge through dreams. These two components take part of the process of individuation that allows the self-acceptance of the characters. The movie The Strategy of the Snail shows a way of resistance against the injustice of justice. The characters believed in the collective defense of what belongs and identifies a group and because of that they protect what is yours, what is mine and what is ours. According to John's theory of conscience and unconscious mind, we need the process of individuation in order to develop our individual personality and identity. The process is done by bringing the personal and collective unconscious to the conscience, creating in that way the self, which means the whole of us. One distinctive part of the self is called persona. The persona represents all the different social masks that we wear among various groups and situations, the appearance one wants to present to the world. The other part of the self is the shadow. It exists as part of the unconscious mind, and it is composed by all repressed ideas that we have and are unacceptable to society. The duality of this theory is closely related to the movie's scenario. For, on one hand, Jung describes the process of individuation as a conflict in which the conscious and unconscious constantly struggle to create and actualize the self. In such way, the dispute between the Casa Surreve's tenants and the politicians in his team of attorneys also represent the struggle for one's identity. The two sides in conflict legitimizes the significance and transcendence of identity in the movie. From a sociocultural perspective, we can also relate the self-conflict to the movie's conflict, since, as we already mentioned, the whole movie is a representation of fighting for one's recognition as an individual with dignity. As the Australian philosopher John Finney said, the solid core of human dignity represents the literally immeasurable value of human personality on each of its basic aspects. This means without dignity there is not identity. If we analyze more in depth, the idiosyncratic characters of the movie reinforce Jung's archetypes theory. After all, this theory talks about how, in our collective unconscious, all cultures have the same roles that influence the human behavior. The characters of the movie are the typical characters of the traditional Colombian population. Each of them is related to one of Jung's archetypes. For instance, El Dr. Alguín correlates with the ruler, owing to his need of impulse, his will, no matter the consequences or the damage he will cause. On the other hand, the trickster was represented by the lawyer, Victor Honorio Mosquera, as he deceived, lied, and created all kinds of troubles just to get what he wanted. Romero the dog, with his leadership courage, but also Marty's threat, represented the hero. And finally, Gabriela and Gabriel, the transgender, who represented the animas and the anima both in him, herself, portraying the imagery of men and women. All those archetypes represented by the characters of the movie highlighted the importance of identity. What would you do to defend yours?